Well, hello there everyone and welcome to my channel and another haul video. Um, mostly books this time, a couple of movies also. Uh, a, a haul of many things, if you like. And that's a D&D &D reference for you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I just, I've bought a lot of stuff recently and I've also uh, gotten a few things for free uh, from friends that I wanted to show you. And, um, well, first of all, I would like to start with some movies that I got at a um, an event in my in a neighboring town recently. It's not, I wouldn't call it a sci-fi con, it's more like a sci-fi trade fair or, or something like that. Uh, nerdy people selling nerdy stuff to other nerdy people um, with the theme of sci-fi, of course. <coughs> so... Let's just begin here. First of all, I got this one, which is Hercules in New York. Um, <laughs> with our favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is kind of famous for not being very good, but if you like crazy B-movies the way I do, this is like a must-have in your collection. Um, I haven't actually seen it yet, but I'm sure I will enjoy it, Sasha. I usually do with movies like that. <clears throat> And then, well, let's take this one first here. Uh, I also got Future World, which is like the lesser known uh, sequel to Westworld and, and not the TV series Westworld, the, the original movie. Uh, I haven't seen this one. I haven't seen the TV show either. I have just seen the original Westworld movie, uh, which was all right. Um, it's, it's considered a bit of a classic, but I think it's left some things unexplored um, but that's a talk for another video <laughs> uh, but yeah I got I got the sequel this time around and I'm looking forward to, to watching this one it's you yeah, know I like this sort of um, uh, retro look on things and this is from 1976 oops sorry um, not sure when Hercules in New York is from but it's like 80s or something and then I also got this one, which is called Manborg, and uh, the cover sort of looks like it's it's a uh, silly sci-fi movies from the eighties, and uh, it isn't. <laughs> it's from two thousand eleven, but it's made to look like uh, it's from the eighties, uh, and that sort of art style uh, attracts me. I like that kind. Um, however, I haven't heard that many good things about this one. I really only mostly bought it because of the cover, <laughs> because that sort of cover just, yeah, that's my thing. That's totally my thing. Uh, but yeah, we will see if I like it uh, when I view it, which I don't know when I'll have time to do that, but someday. And then I got this one, um, the title is in Swedish here, Colossen på Rodos, original title is Il Colosso di Rodi. It's Italian, I think. Uh, or in English, the Colossus of Rhodes. Rhodes? Rhodes? It's like an island in the Mediterranean, I think. I'm not sure how it's pronounced in English. Uh, we call it Rhodes. But yeah, whatever. Uh, <coughs> this is just sort of exactly what it looks like. Uh, Sergio Leone is apparently involved. Um, he is... Yeah, he wrote the screenplay, apparently. And yeah, I, I don't know anything about this one, other than I liked the cover and I liked the look of things in the back. Uh, <laughs> it seems like one of those similar to, to all the Hercules movies that we got. Uh, in the 60s. This is from 1961. Um, they're not really amazing movies, but, but I, f I find them visually pleasing, uh, at least some of the, the ones that I've, I've seen. So yeah, I wanted to give this one a try and it wasn't, it was fairly uh, not expensive. Um, then I got another movie here that is called The Congress. I don't know much about this one, sorry, uh, other than uh, it, it was, uh, you know, uh, we had it on a 
film festival in my town a couple of years ago. I missed it at that time, but some of my friends saw it and said that it was really good. Um, and it seems to be like part live action, part animated movie. Um, and I like animation and, you know, it's, it's sci-fi and I like sci-fi, so I wanted to give it a try. Um, but I've heard it's a bit sort of depressing. <laughs> it's not light-hearted fun the same way that Hercules in New York is. <laughs> Uh, but there's uh, time for that as well. And the last movie that I got uh, is one that I've actually seen before. This is Journey to Agartha, also known as uh, Children Who Chase Lost Voices from Deep Below. Uh, that's the title that I've uh, known it under. But it's an anime made by Makato Shinkai, who... Uh, he's not a Studio Ghibli person, but he is... Uh, outside of Studio Ghibli, one of my favorite uh, anime creators. He did uh, Voices of a Distant Star and also The Place Promise in our early days. And I liked both of those movies. And I really liked this one. Uh, it was a long time ago that I watched it, so I don't remember a lot about it. Um, but I'm looking forward to, to re-watching it. Um, I would say if you do like Studio Ghibli movies, uh, in the style of, you know, Laputa or um, or Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, etc. Uh, the sort of fantasy movies of that kind. I will recommend this one. I think you will like it. And uh, yeah, I, this is this was some sort of collector's edition and with a bonus disc and stuff, but I haven't, I haven't looked at that. And then we're moving on to books. And... Uh, I got a trilogy here of fantasy romance novels. Uh, one of them I'm reading with with a bunch of friends, and the other one is just the rest of the series. And I figured, you know, well, get the whole trilogy when I'm at it. And uh, <coughs> first of all, we have My Lady Mage by Alexis Morgan, a Warriors of the Mist novel. Uh, don't know a lot about this one. Um, it says here, it is whispered in Agathia that the legendary warriors of the mist, cursed by the gods, can be summoned only when a champion is needed and the cause is just. Gideon, their captain, knows this is the one path that will lead his men to redemption, lest they face an eternity of damnation. <coughs> and then uh, so on and so forth, and there's a, a woman who needs their help, etc. Uh, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to reading this one. I think I, w I might like it. It sounds like something up my alley. And I think it's definitely better than the other fantasy romance series that I read recently. Uh, the Annika Burisma series, which was not really good. Uh, yeah. Uh, and then the two other books in that series are uh, Her Knight's Quests and Honor's Prize. And I think... Uh, these are like fairly standalone um, take place in the same world obviously but they're like a new couple falling in love in every book as as is the usual format um, but yeah I, I think I will like these I hope I will like them and uh, I like the covers and they're shiny and, and nice so yeah those, uh, those those were some books that I bought and then I went to visit uh, a friend of mine uh, who, you know, she's part of the local fandom um, and she has actually, she's slightly older than the rest of us and she has been in the science fiction fandom for quite a while and she has a, a, a big collection of fandom stuff and sci-fi books and all that uh, and she was getting rid of some of them, you know, she said <laughs> they just... She didn't have room for them any anymore, so she wanted some of us to to go there and see if we found anything of interest. And obviously, I did, because free books. Come on, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll be there. Um, so I actually tried to restrain myself and <laughs> and sort of be a bit picky and just choose the books that I really wanted. Um, first of all, we have a couple of Michael Moorcock books. This is The King of the Swords and The Queen of the Swords. I assume these are 
uh, part of the same series. <clears throat> it's not uh, the ah, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Elric. Yeah, Elric is like Morcock's big fantasy heroes. It's not that series. Um, but all of Morcock's books is like connected in the same universe or something. So, <laughs> um, and I really liked the retro covers on this one. It's possible you can find these uh, today in, in like a uh, omnibus edition or something. And it's possible I will replace them eventually with something like that. Uh, but I do have some other Morcock books in my collection, so I figured, you know, just add a bit to that collection. I don't know what it is, but I'm thinking if it's probably some, like, maybe some, some sword and sorcery fantasy or something like that. I don't know. We will see. It's Michael Morcock, so I'm just like, yeah, I'll pick them up. <laughs> and then we have another a couple of other, other books here that I don't know anything about. I just like the covers. Um, they are called The Bones of the Past and Fire in the Mist by Holly Lyle. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, I actually recognize her name and I could have sworn I had a book or two by her, but I can't find them. So <laughs> apparently I, I don't own them. It's, 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 I could have sworn I had them. But yeah, anyway, I didn't have these two. And they, uh, you know, typical uh, Bain, 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 how do you pronounce it? Bain books? The the um, publisher, Bain, Bain books. Um, they're, they're kind of famous for having really cheesy covers, but uh, I really like these covers. And these are also some sort of uh, fantasy of some kind. Um, but it's a female author and that's always something that I uh, appreciate and gravitate towards. And then we have a couple of doll books. These uh, yellow spines, well they're not so yellow anymore, they're kind of bleached. Um, but they used to have yellow spines and they have this, no, this little um, logo here. I kind of collect these because I think they're they look <laughs> nice. Uh, once again, I am attracted to these kind of um, retro covers. These are bo both by uh, Philip Joseph Farmer, Flight to Opar and Hayden of Ancient Opar. These appear to also be in the same series uh, because they have Opar in the name, both of them. Um, yeah, I'm thinking uh, also some maybe sword and sorcery like fantasy, I don't know. It says in Tarzan's Africa 12,000 years ago. Okay, so it's like some prehistoric fantasy? I don't know. I don't know anything about them. <laughs> I was just like, door books? Yeah, I'm grabbing those. And uh, let's put these away. Then I got a couple of other books here, and as you may be aware of, um, I like <laughs> uh, older movies. Uh, like, my channel name is a reference to, to a silent film from the 20s, so yeah, I like older movies. And I like, like 50s science fiction movies, um, and a lot of those are actually based on novels and short stories and such and uh, I, I got one book here that's called Science Fiction Classics, The Stories That Morphed Into Movies. Uh, I wasn't gonna pick this one up at first but then I sort of looked at the stories inside and there were several here that I've actually seen the movies, the movie versions of and I was kind of interested, um, such as uh, This Island Earth, uh, which in book form is called The Alien Machine. We have The Day the Earth Stood Still, which in book form is called Farewell to the Master. And uh, The Thing from Another World, which is called Who Goes There in book form. Uh, Death Race 2000, which is called The Racer. Um, yeah, just a lot of movies that I am familiar with and I, I, I really... I was just really interested in, in seeing the original stories. 
So I got this one. It's uh, fairly fairly thick. And actually, <laughs> the funny part here is that there's a dedication here in the beginning with a lot of names. And it says, uh, dedicated to the memories of pioneer sci scientific filmmakers and promoters. Uh, which is like s science fiction filmmakers and promoters. And then it has another chapter here. So it's, uh, and those still with us. So it's one for dead people and one for non-dead people. Uh, and my friend, who I actually got this from, <laughs> is mentioned here <laughs> on this page. Uh, which I thought it was a bit funny. And uh, it's also signed by the author. And he, the, the author's name is Forrest Ackerman. And he didn't sign it, sign it Forrest or Ackman, he signed it Forry, which I thought a bit, a bit funny. It sounded like a you know, sort of uh, familiar nickname, uh, you know, sort of thing that you give to friends. Um, <laughs> so I suspect they, they knew each other fairly well. Uh, and then I also got this one, Forbidden Planets. Now this is not, I mean, of course, Forbidden Planet is a kind of well-known uh, science fiction classic movie um, but I believe this is a book based on the film and not not the other way around um, but I was still interested in reading this one uh, <coughs> Forbidden Planet is one of my uh, favorite movies of all time not I'm not sure it would make it top five but it would make it top ten at least I really like it and then I also got from my friend one book that is called The Hills of Far Away, A Guide to Fantasy by Diana Wagoner. It's a bit older. I think it was from the 70s or something. Um, yeah, 78. So not the most updated guide to fantasy that you can find. But, you know, I figured yeah, it sounds like an interesting read anyway. And it's free and all that. So, yeah. Let's give it a try. I will uh, share my thoughts once I've finished it. And then I got from another friend. And this is just one book. Um, because I said I wanted it. And she was like, yeah, you can have it. <laughs> um, this is a book by a guy called Robert, Robert Sheckley. Um, this is the Swedish title here. It says The Tea and the Offerts. Uh, I think the English title is The Tenth Victim and I also have the the movie version of this one which is it's an Italian title I don't know how to pronounce it it's something like La Decima Vittima something like that um, and this here is Ursula Andress that you can see on the cover uh, so yeah I, I think I might uh, sometime in the not so near but not so distant future do like a like a, a review of of the movie and the book next to each other i'm looking forward to that it's not the tenth victim the movie is not my favorite movie or anything but i do like the aesthetics of it and i thought it was kind of interesting um and i also do like ursula andres as an actor i think she's She's all right. And then I went to my local uh, second-hand store, which I, I do that sometimes. <laughs> uh, I buy a lot of my books second-hand, and you'd be surprised. But that kind of explains why I have such a big collection of stuff and so little read, because I buy them faster than I read them. <laughs> yeah, I got issues. Anyway. So what I found there was uh, this one. It's called Shadow Moon by George Lucas and Chris Claremont. And it says an all new saga based on the movie Willow. And Willow is, yeah, that I like Willow. <laughs> um, it's this, ah, um, oh, what's his name? Warwick Davis, I think. Um, a, a dwarf. Uh, actor, fairly famous dwarf actor, uh, who played in, in uh, the, 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 the titular character in Willow. Uh, and it was like one of those <laughs> kind of cheesy 80s fantasy films that was just so awesome. <laughs> I love it. So when I saw that this was the same universe, I figured, yeah, let's let's pick it up. 
So yeah, I got that one. And then I was lucky to find a, a series of book books here that I've been wanting for quite a while. Um, I, I can't remember if this is a complete series. I think there's one book missing here. But that is uh, the Gale Carragher uh, Parasol Protectorate series. Uh, I think that's what they're called, right? Yeah, I think so. And that is... Oh, let's see here. Soulless and Changeless, Blameless and Heartless. And uh, these are like um, steampunk, gaslight fantasy romance novels. Uh, and I actually see here a picture of one that is called Timeless, which was not among these ones. So I'm missing one, but that's all right. Um, and then, also at this same uh, second-hand place, uh, I was lucky enough to find two role-playing books. Now these are for older edition of said games, but I didn't really care. I was like, mm, these books look awesome, it's role-playing games, uh, I, I'm gonna get them. And um, one of them is uh, Dungeons & Dragons, it's called uh, ghost walk campaign options. I don't really know what that means, but whatever. It's it looks neat and it looks fantastic, and I just I like role playing books because I think they have such awesome art in them. Um, I don't play a lot of D and D, so I'm not sure I'm gonna use it. You know, as 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 is intended. Um, but I I actually buy a lot of role playing books just to use as, as inspiration for other role playings. Um, because I we play some a couple of friends of mine we play some role playing games. And uh, uh, even if we use a different system, you can still use other role playing books to sort of get ideas from and, and such. So uh, I think I'm gonna do that. At least for the time being. And then the second one is called uh, Dragon Star Guide to the Galaxy. And uh, it says here, requires the use of the Dungeons & Dragons Player's Handbook 3rd Edition. So it's apparently part of the D&D world, I don't know. I don't know anything about Dragon Story, if I'm honest. And I keep bumping my microphone, I'm really sorry. Um, but once again, I just thought it looked neat and it was low cost and just, yeah. I'm gonna grab that, so I did. <laughs> so, have you, I don't know, have you played any of the things that are in these books? Or are familiar with them? Uh, what did you think of them? Uh, I would like to hear from you. And, uh, or have you read any of the other things that I showed here? Seen any of the movies and such? Uh, share your thoughts down below, as usual. And, uh, I will see you again soon. Thank you very much for watching, like and subscribe and bye bye.